and welcome to a Holly's Hot Takes episode. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. Actually, funnily enough, the last time I did a Holly's Hot Takes was back in the January transfer window. And that was a good time because that was when we got Ben Tenker and Kula Besky. So it is nice to be back. I want to say hello. How are we all doing? Like I said, tonight's video will pretty much be a roundup of everything I've kind of missed uh considering obviously the jubilee uh four day weekend so i hope everybody's had fun uh celebrating that if you are here in england um it's nice to see you back my friend um i'm glad to meet you too uh welcome back to the channel um if you've never seen the holly's hot takes before normally it is just me uh giving my hot take on everything that's pretty much going on around the club at the minute and we have a quite a few things to talk about like i said as i've been away and as many have probably been away celebrating the weekend there's been a few developments in kind of transfers and rumors and this that and the other before we get started i want to say a big thank you to everybody obviously there's some of you joining now i want to say a big thank you to everybody that has um obviously watched listened, subscribed all of that jazz and to these people as well rolling along the bottom that have been members of the channel so far uh next year is going to be well next season so to speak uh should be even bigger and better so if you do want to get in that uh and become a member you'll be entitled to lots of fancy things but they will be probably enforced probably in uh the new season as i've got lots of things lined up but anyway let's get back to the the good stuff which is obviously the fact that we have lots of different things to talk about tonight. Um, one of those things, including obviously players coming in and players going out. Um, obviously, the only real signing we've had um, so far, uh, well, that has officially come out is obviously Perisic, um, which is very nice to hear. I think we're all very excited about it. And the other one that everybody keeps mentioning is obviously Bastoni. Uh, so let me get his face up right now. So Bastoni has been rumoured here, there and everywhere. It hasn't been officially announced that we have officially come up with a bid yet. Um, but there is a lot, I mean a lot of talk about him. He is obviously 23. He's a left-sided centre-back. Now he can play centre-back. I think Antonio Conte has said that he wants him to be Romero's starting partner next season, which will be quite interesting. But like I said, he can play on the left side, so potentially where Ben Davies plays. And I think that would actually benefit us, as obviously Perisic is already at the club for Tottenham. Um, having Bastoni in as well, they'll make up some good link-up play uh, down that left-hand side. But again, it is quite nice to have some versatility in terms of that he could play uh, at the centre-back to obviously uh, aid... Uh, Romero as his partner or he could also play left-sided and help out Perisic down the wing it'd be quite interesting to see what happens I mean thank you Max for joining Bastoni times Romero we are cooking I feel it would be a very very good partnership or like I say we can't really down for Dyer Dyer's done well this season but Bastoni will be a cracking upgrade let me give you a bit more hindsight into obviously Bastoni. We've noticed that obviously he will be a great partner with Romero. He said that he's a left side centre back, so he will fit into that back three. Uh, he's currently contracted with uh, the side he's at at the moment, which I believe is into till 2024, and they are asking for 60 million euros, aka in British money, that is 51.5 million. Now, there is no word that uh, Tottenham have officially bidded so far, so yet. Yeah, there's still no official offers. Um, but he is close potentially to being a Spurs man. Welcome to everybody joining in. Bastoni would be a great signing. It would be. It would be lovely. Um, but yeah, I, I would be quite interested to have this guy at the club. Like I said, it's, it's signing class. He's worked with Antonio Conte before. So it'd be rather interesting. We've just got to hope and wait and see that if Tottenham will actually, like Daniel says here, splash the cash. We've done so, so far. I think the most interesting thing that I think I've, I've learned from today, and I think Alistair Gold wrote about it, is the fact that obviously him and Perisic are very well linked together. Um, so it'd be exciting to see if he does come in. Uh, Tiny's come in. Conte paired Bastoni lesson about Perisic left wing back at Inter to title winning effect. Come on, Paratici. Agreed. I've just mentioned this, Tiny, actually. We've, we've got great minds. Um, they have worked together before. And like you've just said, Tiny, they've won stuff under Conte. And 
at uh, Inter. So it'd be interesting to see whether he does come in. I think lots of us are very excited for this signing. It's another big name again. It's another proven winner. So it'd be exciting to see what happens. Moving on from Bastoni, I'm going to bring up Cheap Slime's comments. Even Holly, I need to ask you serious questions. If you were Conte, who would you want to sign and sell to potentially just get very far in the UCL? I think we've... Um, I think we've done so well so far, Cheap Slime. It's, it is known for uh, uh, Conte not to spend a lot of guinea. Um, he makes very clever signings, which we'll get on to the next signing, which is inevitable very soon. Um, but I think it's it's also getting rid of those players as well. We'll get on to the, those that le- guys that are leaving, but we've seen in January, getting rid of players that aren't necessarily fully invested into Tottenham has done the uh, dressing room wonders. So not only is it getting people in, it's getting people out. Um, I'd like to go quite far in the UCL. Why not? We had Matt on here a few weeks ago from... Tottenham Twitch channel saying, why not go all out? Why not go for it? We've got Conte. We're getting in some decent signings. What's, let's not go all the way. So I don't know. It'd be interesting. Um, the 100 feet and it splashed out ain't going to last long. Well, you say this, Dad. I will get on to the next person that we're talking about. You are right in a sense of um, if we go for Bastoni, that's half of it gone already. Well, not half of it. I mean, a quarter of it gone. Uh, I can't do maths. A third of it gone. Um, but regardless, always listen to my friends first. <laughs> Oops, I had it. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right, Tiny. You're in now, mate. Um, how much of the 100 million do you think we will actually spend? Well, Daz just said here that not of it's going to last long if we keep going out for these signings. So I'm not too sure. I think I think we're doing quite well. We've just spoken about Bastoni Allen, which I will later post it out as a individual video. We've just talked about Bastoni. Uh, they want at least 60 euro, 60 million euro, sorry, which in UK money, in Great British Pounds, that is... 51.5 million. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how much it goes. Uh, Reckon Spence is ready for the big step. Now, Max, you've read my mind because the next geezer that we have on our radar, radar is this geezer right here once I find him. Where is he? Where's he gone? Here he is. And that is DJ Spence, white wing back from Nottingham Forest. Now, his uh, mother club, should I say, or father club, however you want to put it, is Middlesbrough. Um, so... If we are going to do any dealings, it will potentially be with Middlesbrough. Uh, he is only 21. As we said last year, he uh, was in the Nottingham Forest squad. Um, he managed to gain two goals and five assists and gained them promotion. Once again, I just want to reiterate his age. He is only 21. Uh, Alistair Gold has come out in recent days to say that Spurs and Conte are pushing for him. But it's slightly delayed at the moment because he is playing for the under 21s at the most. So if anything is going to happen in terms of DJ Spence, it will not really be until the 13th of the 15th of June when he has finished playing basically for England and is settled back in uh, either Forest or Middlesbrough, wherever he is living at the mo. Um, but we aren't the only club actually after him. We are indeed in a long list of teams, including the likes of... Here we go. Drum roll, please. Uh, the likes of Roma, Dortmund, obviously Forrest, because he is on loan at them currently from parent club Middlesbrough, Newcastle and Brentford. So it is here to be seen that he is someone that a lot of clubs are after, which could hint at the fact that he is top quality. I didn't watch much of him last season. Obviously, I think most of us, knowing that the fact he was here, there and everywhere in the rumours that we did watch him, obviously, in that playoff, promotion playoff. We didn't really see a lot of him, but I'm not going to write him off, obviously, from just seeing one game of him. Lots of people rate him. He is a right wing back, which we heavily need. Um, and the good thing is, we're talking about money and, and NX splashing the cash for 150 mil. He is only between the asking price of 15 to 18 million, which is great biz- business. Um, and as we've already heard from Antonio Conte so far, that also uh, he is going to put them through their grueling and through their paces. So he is going to be, obviously, become more fitter, which I think, Every Spurs player will become eventually after, remember, his the first pre-season training under Conte. So it will be an exciting prospect for us. And I think we all kind of say with every rumour that's coming out at the moment, if Conte wants him, I'm down for that. Because it is true. I think that we've all got a, we all trust Conte, uh, the mad Italian. And if he wants him, and I think uh, the main pushing thing at the moment is that Conte definitely wants him to be a Spurs player. And I think at the end of the Nottingham Forest um, game, he did say 
that he wants to spend a bit more time at Forest. But again, that could be emotions. That might not necessarily be him thinking straight. He might go away, play for England on the 21s, come back. And that lure to Tottenham could be potentially the thing that gets him over the line. It'd just be very interesting, like I said, to have obviously Perisic on one wing, this guy on the other. That means possibly Emerson or Doherty to leave the door. I don't know which one I feel I'd want to leave out of those, but Henny Ho, let's have a look at some of you guys that you've put into the comments. 15 mil for Spence. Yeah, between 15 and 18 mil, I think. I think that's the, the asking price. Uh, Spence looks like a good prospect. I'm not sure he's Premier League ready yet, so will Conte take a chance? It's a good question. I think, Alan, because uh, Conte has said multiple times now that he, he's pushing for it and the fact that the intent from Tottenham is coming there from lots of reliable sources in terms of Alistair Gold, um, which... And Fabrizio, I think that is something to potentially hold on to, that Conte does want him. So sometimes in life, you've got to take a chance. And maybe this is the one chance we take. I mean, we've we've got proven winners in the team now with Perisic. Obviously, we have potentially might be getting Bastoni that we spoke about earlier. So maybe taking a wing on this right-back position might be possible. I'm not sure. Maybe he keeps Emerson. I don't know. Or maybe he keeps Doherty as, as, as a reserve. It is a good question. Um Max says, homegrown player, great potential, worth taking a risk, in my opinion. I think that's another thing to take into account. So obviously, there was a few more outs where my man, Harry Winks, could be out the door soon to Southampton, which isn't far away from me. Um, but that will be one homegrown player gone. So maybe replace him for Spence for 15 to 18 million with the prospect of being a good right wing back. Why not? Maybe it is Maybe it is uh, something to take. <laughs> Max says, no more Emerson comps. I mean, that is true. We won't have to witness that anymore. Um, although they were getting quite good towards the end. Um, hello, NS. Welcome, my friends. Well, thanks again uh, the other day, my friend, for the super chat. I do really appreciate it. Uh, Spence wants guaranteed game time. That is probably the only other thing. Uh, does he stay at Forest and get guaranteed in the first side at Forest? Or does he move to Tottenham and maybe have to work a bit harder for his place, but he'll be working underneath Antonio Conte? I think that's something only he can really... Um, put it down to like I said I think because he's away with the under 21s at the moment he's probably got England stuff to think about and then when he comes back that'll probably be the time when we actually see if these talks turn into a reality we see Spence at Tottenham but it's an interesting prospect I am very excited for it um that I can't say Mark I'll say that dad would you like to see Bell back talks Cardiff want him uh I think if they didn't qualify for the World Cup congrats to Wales uh yesterday then I think he would have retired. I think he would have done. Um, Cardiff, potentially, there's rumours that he could go to Southampton. I don't think he's going to go to Southampton. I would like to see him back at Tottenham, I think, under Jose Mourinho, even though he hardly ever played. The assists and the goals that he got uh, in that stint with us is great. Uh, would he Would he work with Conte right before a World Cup? Uh, we know he's going to put them under their paces with a gruelling pre-season. Is that something Gareth Bell wants? I don't know. I think, again, it, a bit like Spence, I think it's down to what he wants. Um, I, he'll definitely join a club because he'll want to stay match fit for the World Cup. Uh, it just depends what club that will be. I wouldn't mind seeing him back at Spurs. I just don't know whether it would work with Conte. Um, and maybe he likes catch up too much. I don't know. Um, uh, by the way, what a performance from Ben Davies yesterday. Yes. Again, Wales, congratulations for um, getting to the World Cup. But Ben Davies, my words. I think I posted a picture the other day. Uh, no, I think it was yesterday, actually, of Conte giving Davies the eyes. Uh, and that's where it all changed for Ben Davies. That, yeah, big him up. Um, so, moves on to maybe the outs. We've kind of spoken about two players that I think are pretty much on the cusp of being Spurs players. Obviously, we've got Bastoni that I think uh, Spurs still need to make an official, uh, what's it called, uh, offer for him or an official, official word. Um, Spence, I think, again, it's up to him. We've got to wait for he comes back from the under-21 games. Um, but there is one person that is rumoured to obviously be leaving the club. To be fair, I don't begrudge him or whatever, and that is Stephen Bergwijn. Uh, it has been known, I think there was a, a video clip that came out the other day um, where he basically said, it's difficult for me. I play well at a national team, but when I return to the club, people turn a blind eye to me. I need to find a solution. And that sounds quite ominous, but then the reporter says, it is clear to you, you need to leave. And he says, yes. Now, sadly for Bervine, I don't think it's necessarily worked out uh, for him. I think on big occasions, obviously, the Leicester comeback was magical 
it was amazing the fact he managed to get those two goals. But sadly, I don't think he's going to get ahead of the lights of Kulaveski. Obviously, Sonny, if he plays on the other side. And to be fair, at times, Lucas. Um, and it is, it is a real shame because I think under different circumstances, if we didn't have those other players around him, he probably would have got in front. Um, but I just don't think it's it's worked for him, um, to be honest. He's a talent, but like I said, we have other talented wingers at the club, sadly. Um, and he's just, you know, I think he's keeping his options open. I think he's been heavily linked to Ajax since January. So it'd be interesting to see whether, I think that's his choice as well, whether he goes there. Uh, reports have come out today from Fabrizio Romano that uh, we want at least 30 million euros, aka in uh, Great British Pounds terms, that is 25.6 million pounds. Uh, it's quite a steep, I think. It's quite steep in terms of um, how much we want to see him go for, in terms of, I think, we're, we're kind of pushing it up there. But again, if we didn't have the likes of Kulaveski, we didn't have the likes of Sonny, we didn't have the likes of uh, Lucas Ber uh, Lucas Bergwijn, Lucas Mora, I think we'd all be sitting here and saying, he's probably worth that. Uh, it's just sadly for him, he hasn't. he's not getting a game time at Tottenham, but he is doing wonders on the national, uh, national international scale. Uh, Mail at Mail Sport today, Daily Mail Sport, I think I've said that right, have said that Everton are also interested, but I think for him, his heart is um, inevitably set on going to uh, Ajax if they officially come in with a bid. Like I said, the um, initial um, fee or the asking price at Tottenham is €30 million. Euros. Whether that is met or not, I don't know. But with Enik and obviously Paratici at the moment, I think they will take a slight cut uh, in order to get certain players in. Uh, keep Lucas, good squad player and good attitude player. He can help us in big games. I think, again, he's a big person in the dressing room. Obviously, another player that has left recently is Galini. And when we had Matt on the show for the end of season review, which if you haven't already, please go watch because Matt is um, from the uh, Tottenham Twitch. Um, he's, he's a producer at Tottenham, basically. Um, and he get a great insight into some players at the dressing room where he's at Tottenham, Tottenham Way all the time. And he was saying how Galini, he's, he, he, at the time, he had it left. But um, he was saying if Galini leaves, he'd be quite devastated because he's a big character. Um, and I, I didn't really know that. I didn't. Re I don't think any of us really knew that. Um, but he was a big character. So I think, like you said um, here, uh, Lucas, is, he's got a good attitude. And he is, I think, someone that has a big presence in the dressing room. Um, I'm glad you brought this up, Max, because yes, that is the that is the word at the moment. That there, there is a rumor going around that Saint Max Van could be coming to Tottenham. But again, Max, do we really need another one? <laughs> uh, again, I think it depends on his price, whether I want him or not. Uh, it'd be great because he's obviously Newcastle's, I think, best player. Um, but whether he comes to Tottenham, I'm not too sure. I don't think he'd get as much game time as he would do at Newcastle. Uh, again, that's up to him what he wants. I'm not too sure. If I'm feeling the vibe, obviously I'd love him to come. But again, will we have the same problem that we had with uh, Bergwijn? Quality, but not quality enough to get ahead of some players? I'm not too sure. Bergwijn is better than Maximum. Fair comment, Fez. I just don't think we've given Alexander him enough time. Well, not enough time. I don't think we've given him game time. He's clearly not in Conte's plans, uh, which is safe to see and say. Uh <laughs> Oh, I love it, except the three on the top left. Well, that kind of brings me on to the next point. Obviously, we've gone over the three major points so far, which I will be making into little miniature clips, uh, which I will upload. Uh, but just going off topic slightly into other rumours and things, Harry Winks is obviously rumoured to leave Tottenham Hotspur this summer, uh, <laughs> which means I will have to officially burn the doll because I haven't done so yet. Um, but yes, the two clubs that are potentially after him are uh, the likes of uh, Southampton and Newcastle. Uh, to be honest, I think the, the one that I think would probably work out best for him would be Southampton, because Carl Walker-Peters is there. Um, and they're, I think they're good mates. So that'd be quite nice to see him move on to Southampton. But yeah, I think I'm kind of with everyone now. Harry Winks is not the geezer. Um, but yes, uh, <laughs> what was the lowest and highest moment as a Tottenham supporter last season? Uh, probably, um, well, I'd say, I wouldn't say it's the Alsakia because then that brought in Conte. Um, I think the highest point was obviously, I think for me, the, you can actually watch this all, Ellis, on the, on the uh, end of season review. But the highest point was probably the, um, 
Arsenal game, lowest point was probably not having a shot on target <laughs> for many games. Uh, Bergwijn would get a game time now because the Europa will be playing in the Cups. True. Maybe we hold on to him. But again, I think it's whether someone comes in because I think 30 mil, 30 million euros is quite a steep asking price. And I think we'd be decent to cash in, especially if we want to get Bastonian. I think it'd be quite a good um, thing. Winks to Roman work with Joe Seller. Oh, yeah, no. Don't think that's for him. Time for him to move on. Best thing to do at the moment will always be our Tottenham boy. Agreed. And I can agree with that. Um, Seville have been linked with Winks as well. I don't think he's going to move abroad, to be honest. I don't think he would. I think Southampton's probably the best fit for him. And that's closer to me. Um, but <laughs> moving on, obviously, the latest news as well, just one to throw in there before we wrap things up, is obviously the fact that Gabriel Jesus has been obviously thrown about here, there and everywhere. Obviously, our people down the road, uh, them lot, Arsenal, have been the biggest people to have been linked with him. Mikel Arteta has said that he is the one that he wants this summer to bring in the striker. Uh, and Tottenham and Tottenham have decided to put a spanner in the works and potentially go after him too. I think the asking price at the moment is £40 million. Uh, we have apparently offered today, I don't know how true this is, but 42.1. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I think it's just to wind up Arsenal. Uh, I again, I wouldn't say no to, to bring him in, uh, like Max says, uh, just signing for banter. The one signing that Arsenal get, we then undermine and take from them. Uh, but I, I don't know if the whole reason Jesus is leaving uh, Man City is because he wants to be the man on the site 11 team sheet week in, week out. Uh, and sadly, I think at Tottenham, that won't be the case for him. As much as he'd be great as a uh, as a backup, uh, that's what he wants because that's basically what he's been doing at City. So as much as it pains me to say, I feel like Arsenal will probably get him and he'll probably do wonders for them. Um, not when they play us, though. But I, I just don't think it's, it's worth our time or money to go after him. Um, don't want Jay Z's average at best eight goals, eight assists isn't good enough for the title with a team where you have KDB giving you assists. Agreed, but he hasn't, he didn't get much play time. I mean, that's his main issue. I think that's why he wants to leave, Alex. I think he wants to leave because he wants to be that geezer, um, that's on the team sheet all the time. So I'm not sure. Uh, Winks to Southampton plus cash for Ward Prowse. Oh, can you imagine it, Alan? That would be lovely. But we have Champions League, we do have Champions League, but City also had Champions League. They also have Champions League and he wants to leave because he wants more game time. Um, he wants to be the man on the team sheet. I don't think he's going to get ahead of the likes of Sonny or Kane week in, week out. Uh, oh, was it 28 games? I might beg my pardon. Fair enough. Fair enough. That is, that is fairs. Uh, 50 mil for backup striker. I'll pass, not going to lie. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. And I know that we need a backup striker because we've been saying this for a bloody long time. But I, I just don't think it's going to be personally what uh, Gabriel Jesus wants. He's, I don't think he's going to want to come to us to potentially not know if he's going to be starting every game. And I don't think he will with um, Kane and that. Uh, can you guys not play two up front with both Kane and Gabby? Mm, I don't know, because then it drops out. That's not how Conte likes to play. So I don't think that will work, personally. I, I don't think... I just don't generally think he's in Conte's plans. I think it's just been put out there to wind Arsenal up, <laughs> personally. Uh, get some of our Nunes as backup. I think Nunes is already pretty much done and dusted. Um, I don't think we'll be getting him. But, yeah, they're pretty much all the transfer rumours today. Obviously, we've got Bastoni, uh, Spence, and obviously Stephen Bergwijn wanting out. I will be uh, making them into little clips. So, if you are just joining us or you have missed something, don't worry, they will be uploaded. Please make sure you check them out, like, comment, and uh, share them out. Um, like I said, next season is going to be a big one in terms of content on this channel. I'm hoping to get to 2K. So tell all your friends and your family to subscribe. That'd be excellent. Um, and hopefully in the next coming days, we'll have something new to talk about in terms of a player in a Spurs shirt. I mean, the other player that is potentially done and dusted is, also, is obviously Fraser Forster, but I don't think his contract has officially ended yet. Hence why it has not come out to all of us to say that he is a Spurs player, but um, it'll be very interesting to see when that is out. Uh, we don't need an expensive backup striker, just one who is prepared to work hard and train and sit on the bench until needed. Agreed. An impact. An impact striker, because we have needed one for ages. Um, yes, 100%. Hopefully, like I say, I've, I'm going to 
put some feelers out and see if we can get a Holly's Hot Spurs kind of like transfer window update kind of thing when things happen. Um, but for now, uh, we will be having a Holly's Hot Takes uh, show, basically, to go over everything and my kind of thoughts on who we're getting in, who we're not getting in. Um, and I hope you kind of like these things. Um, Foster doesn't count as a signing. He's a backup to Luris, who will barely play. He is, but it's nice to have someone on the bench that you know can do it. And it also means that now we can score against Southampton. <laughs> Um, but I think it's I think it's a good I mean I think he's like well I don't know why we did got, got rid of Hart to be fair um, just because I think he was better than Galini obviously Galini hasn't worked out but like Matt told us on the show the other week uh, he was a big character in the dressing room and I think big characters is also something that we kind of forget we do need some of them in that dressing room but like I say Perry Six is a done deal I'm very very excited for that uh, NS says when is the next hot take stream I do not know probably uh, next Monday might be at the earlier time of six again. We'll have to wait and see. It depends if there's any developments, any major developments, then I might fizz one up. Um, but what else was I going to say? I'm thinking, depending on what time kickoff is tomorrow, I might do a watch along for the England game, but I will turn it off if it was as boring as it was against Hungary as I decided to go play darts instead. But please keep your eyes peeled. Thank you, Max. I do really appreciate it. It's quite nice to just chill out and talk about things. I'm trying to be a bit more professional with my transfer videos because... I don't normally know what I'm talking about. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the wonderful things that you would do. And like I said, if you have missed anything from tonight's show, you can rewatch, or I will be fizzing up little clips of each thing. Just before we go, I'm going to answer Ravi's comment. What do you think Perisic will bring to the team? A lot. An awful lot. I think something that we've been missing, obviously, he's transformed into a left wing back. So we'll see some decent crosses into the box. He's also, I think, if you look back on the video I loaded uh, last week when he signed for us, uh, there's a lot of stats in there. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but he's fairly old in terms of uh, age-wise, but he's not in football-wise. He played so many games last season. Uh, it was named in play of the season in the Serie A. So he is going to bring a lot of professionalism, a lot of hard work and a lot of quality to this Tottenham side. And he is, once again, a proven winner. Uh, Big at Holly, great show. Thank you very much. Uh, keep Emerson and Mora if you want to commute top three Champions League. We need to add 100 to him. It is not a lot. Fez, pace, strong, creative goal scorer. Alex, Come on the show, you're taking it from me. Amazing words. I yeah, agree. That's what he's going to bring, and I'm very excited for it. But like I say, if you are new to the channel, please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, all the good things. Like I said, next season, I'm going to work on properly on uh, the members' side of things. So if you're not one already, and fancy becoming one, please do. Like I said, these guys all here in the names belong, uh, below Sorry, are all uh, members to the channel. Uh, so if you fancy doing that next season, let me know. But Holly Sot Takes will probably be back uh, next Monday unless there are any developments in terms of who's coming in and who's going out. But like I say, until next time, ladies and gents, uh, let me find a thing. Come on, you Spurs.